So the Modern Warfare 2 beta has concluded today, and with that, it means that we now have a little over a month until the game launches in full. For those that digitally pre-order, a few weeks until you can play the campaign, but the full thing, we've got a bit of a wait. But with Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer beta concluded, what's my thoughts after a few days of in-game playtime between the two weekends the past two weeks? Today, I want to share my overall thoughts, opinions, and feedback on the game and offer up some constructive criticisms where I think are applicable, adding my potential solutions instead of just saying that I don't like this or I don't like that, and generating a communal discussion here on the channel. I know that some devs in PR will probably be looking at videos across the YouTube platform and others, so feel free to drop your thoughts, and as always, let's try to keep it in a constructive manner. Insults and pure toxicity is the surest way to have ideas ignored, not only just in this space, but in life in general. No one's receptive to that, so let's be constructive with it, but as we go along, drop your thoughts on what you'd like to see added, changed, adjusted, whatever the case. If you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video, and if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to stay with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ as we gear up towards all of it. We've got a busy couple of months upcoming, so if you'd like to join the community as we chase down half a million subscribers, I'd love to have you. For now though, let's take a look at my Modern Warfare 2 beta feedback. To start, as a disclaimer, these are my opinions. I'm sure that some of you will strongly agree and some will be a hard pass on that feedback, which again, I encourage you as a result to drop your thoughts on the beta below. For this though, I want to start out with what I'd change at a top level, some of the fundamental gameplay systems rather than individual items, but we'll get to that stuff a little later on down the line. First and foremost, the perk system. Realistically, I don't think the perk packages will change. I think I'm just going to have to get used to that and accept that it will be the system at hand. Now, of course, Infinity War did increase that charge rate. We played with that for a brief period of time. Again, I wish we'd have more than 24 hours on the beta to truly feel it out. To me, I think this should have been a weekend one versus weekend two change. And I think that at that point, we'd be able to see exactly what we want by comparison, what feels better. A 24 hour window isn't enough in my opinion, but I did feel like I liked that change here in the increased charge rate. But honestly, I'd be happy to pitch an idea to anyone one willing to listen again. Give us three perks, remove that bonus perk set, have the basic three, and then have your ultimates on a charged rollout per game. I think that's a solid middle ground between the classic and the new perk package system. While with the updated system, you get both pretty fast on the increased charge rate. I think this could allow further incentivized play to a degree, but also not deviating too much from what people may like. Would be interested to see how that would play out, but that's something the perk packages, I think I might just have to get used to. Now, spawns were another big thing within the beta that I definitely noticed, and I get that it's a beta but some spawn points were just wild. I think that Domination Mercado might actually be some of the worst spawns that I think I've ever seen in a Domination game mode, but I know those will be changed out, but fundamentally, I do hope that they change at least Farm 18 and Mercado in terms of some of the base spawn points overall. I mean, when you start the match, you don't start at your flags that you're trying to capture your home base, per se. Instead, I'll use Mercado as a perfect example. You kind of spawn on a 90-degree rotation and horizontally to those home flags. The restaurant side spawn ends up spawning, like, on B flag. So that's an immediate early game map positioning that is a strong power point to set up your team that if they know what they're doing and they know how to hold that map control, you can dominate the rest of the game. So I kind of hope that at least that map in particular shifts again 90 degrees back to where you spawn with your home flag, but that's just me. Next, I want to touch on something that I'm sure is again a hot topic of discussion, red dots on the minimap. And this is a weird topic for a lot of people. Some people are the diehard. This is how Call of Duty has always been and incentivizes movement and adds value to certain attachments and you'll also get the just adapt counters and stuff like that so like it's an entirely split topic there's a ton of people on one side ton of people on the other i get it it goes back and forth and with so many things in this video and call of duty in general it's such a big game you can't please everybody now my solution which i doubt will happen but i want to be able to dream man give us a standard subset of 6v6 or 10v10 modes in a mosh pit on a rotation of maps keeping the regular play experience like a mosh pit of tdm domination hardpoint a couple others maybe here with that in its own sort of subsection game mode like an LTM but a permanent one so then at that point you end up having the traditional experience if you want to call it that for those that want to go and play it but then it's not invasive or takes away from that casual experience they're trying to build out here because apparently so many people are bothered by the red dots on the minimap that it needs to be taken out I mean hell I'd even take a mode like that where it's again a mosh pit of game modes and maps with red dots and such on the minimap I'd take that at the bottom or like the end of the quick play filter if it means that we can end up having it and it doesn't take away from that air quote casual casual experience. That's my solution here to it. I don't think that Infinity Ward's going to bring it back at any point here in this year and maybe in the future. I mean, Modern Warfare 2019 and this, they seem pretty adamant about not having it. So I think it's a good way to compromise, have its own separate playlist for it and let the players choose at that point. 
Now, outside of that, footstep audio I do think needs to be decreased. I'm somebody that loves to listen to footstep audio. I think that even while it is something that is usually stereotyped as being a camper thing, running around the map, you can still hear players. It's not just used by those that'll sit in corners and everything, but I absolutely understand where it is pretty loud at this point where it does need drop down. I've heard people through like two to three walls at points on certain maps and it sounds like they're on top of me. So I think bringing that down just a tad in that mix would definitely be beneficial to the overall gameplay experience. Next, I want to talk about the enemy nameplates because this is something that I had a massive issue with in the beta and it was something that I'm hopeful this isn't an issue for the launch because there are game settings that were found for nameplate visibility. But as it stands right now, I could not tell you how many times a player blended in perfectly with the tents and the fruit stands on Mercado, that they were perfectly in line with a teammate across the map where my teammate's blue dot was above the enemy's head and so on. So even if you just give us a red dot above the character model, for whatever reason, I don't understand the logic behind removing them, whether it was a bug, whether it was intentional, I don't get why they weren't there, but I'd even after the beta just take a red dot over top of their head at the very least. So fingers crossed we get that or nameplates actually visible again within the full game. But beyond that, in terms of top level things, TTK is the last thing I'll talk about before we get into some more detailed and specific items. Now, my friend Ace broke down the TTK to show that it's relatively on par with Modern Warfare 2019, even in some cases being slower than Modern Warfare 2019. So why it feels like you're putting shots into people and then they'll turn around and melt you in two really comes down to at least what I think is the servers and the netcode. So I'm hoping that that's ironed out for the full launch of the game and this was just a beta issue, but I guess we'll see. Either way, I'm still a fan of increasing that TTK overall from an average of around like 250 milliseconds to something like 300 to 350 milliseconds. Nothing too crazy. I know we can't ramp it up to like Black Ops 4 levels, but I think that when the TTK is at a low enough point, it becomes less about who's the better shot and who's more pre-aimed or camping out a point. And while I hate to say it, logically so. If you're playing a streak, why would you run through a map to the point where getting from A to B could result in you simply running across somebody that's sitting in a corner, listening to those loud footsteps like we just mentioned, and you get deleted in two shots where you don't have the opportunity to react at all. I think that by increasing that TTK, ever so slightly, you might be able to take one or two more shots at most, and then that's enough to maybe turn on a player if you are somebody that is the better shot, more skilled with your accuracy. I think that tweaking that would be beneficial to the overall play experience, but again, that's just me. Oh, and uh, one more fundamental thing. I don't think that I'm ever going to have any sort of weight on this, but skill-based matchmaking, can we finally please tone it back? Like, come on. I know that Infinity Ward mentioned that they're going to be looking into not disbanding lobbies as much, which is a positive because redistributing every single player to new lobbies after every game is a way that that cycle and sort of ELO system can work behind the scenes. But I mean, come on, man. I'm very much so already not looking forward to grinding at my pistols, melees, and launchers for camo challenges, going up against a full six man of bunny hopping, slide canceling, pre aiming players that are trying out for the CDL later that weekend. I'm absolutely all cool with playing similar skill players, but like, there's a point where you just want to take a break, dude. Now, in terms of gameplay tuning specific things, one that I want to start out with that really isn't all that sort of an issue, perhaps, to many players, but I found myself all the time being like, I wish I could turn this off. I hope that there's a ledge hanging toggle option in your settings. I mean, in terms of the mantling options, we have three different settings here for this, but nothing to toggle on or off that ledge hang mechanic. I'd like to, in some instances, just be able to grab onto a ledge and leap over top of it. Now, while it could be cool for some strategy and all that kind of stuff, Honestly, I wasn't really finding myself using the ledge hang mechanic to the degree that it was made for all that much, if at all, within the beta. So I'd love to be able to just turn that off, just go right into a mantle. Beyond that, I'd love to see some nerfs to stuns and flashes firstly. I fully understand the importance of taking battle hardened as a counter and that strategic point of having stuns and flashes equipped, but the duration in which they last and the intensity, especially those stun grenades. With stun grenades, if I get stunned, man, I may as well just have the option to respawn right there from that stun screen because that seven seconds or whatever that I can't move, I can barely turn, all that, well, it's 99% of the time going to result in me dying. So if you get hit by a stun, to me, it's kind of like, all right, game over. Let's just restart whatever streak we're on in the next life. So I'd love to see that toned down, even if just like to four seconds, five seconds on that stun duration, 
it's just way too long at the moment for me. And again, it's a little bit too overpowered in my opinion. I'd also like to see nerfs to the weapon blowback and that smoke when firing. To me, this is kind of Vanguard's beta all over again, where you couldn't see anything. They changed it for beta weekend two, and it was a little bit better, but I definitely still think that you could mitigate it a little bit more, whether that means entirely removing it altogether or just lowering the opacity of that smoke ever so slightly. I think that there just needs to be a little bit more work done to that, but that's my personal opinion. Outside of that, I'd love to see the suppression on incoming fire taken out. I know that it's kind of a visual cue to showcase where shots may be coming from, but I found that even when my teammates were shooting at me, I was getting that as well, and that really threw me off. So I would love to see that, again, either toned back so it's only enemy fire at the most, but also I wouldn't be upset if they removed that feature altogether. Now, talking about incoming fire, I'd love to see a reduction in that flinch effect, and I know that there is something like the focus perk that kind of reduces that, but honestly, that's not the problem that I have with it. I don't mind the perk focus to allow mitigation to flinch. The thing that I have a problem with the flinch is the headshot multipliers mixed in with flinch, because you'll often see where you shoot somebody, you can lose that gunfight a lot of the times and a lot quicker because the view kick headshots come back from Modern Warfare 2. For those that are unaware what view kick headshots are, it's when you shoot an enemy and the flinch will then drastically shoot their aim up in a gunfight. Depending on where that player is shooting, if they're shooting chest and center mass, sometimes that flinch will then end up kicking their shot up to your head, which is where that headshot multiplier is, of course, the highest. And with the headshot multiplier being where it is right now, I think it only needs one additional shot anywhere else on the body if you hit one headshot. So that makes it an incredibly fast TTK and sort of a reactionary RNG gunfight at that point. So to lower that flinch to make sure that doesn't happen as much, I'd be totally fine with that. And talking about those headshot multipliers, I get the argument of realism in the game, but we're not playing a milsim. Fundamentally, it's an arcade shooter. If you can get one random headshot and mix in one shot elsewhere on the body, that's a guaranteed kill in a lot of situations. So with that standard TTK, the health that we have, I just feel like lowering that headshot multiplier might be the better move for the gameplay systems at hand and the overall flow of gunfights. But again, maybe that's just me. Overall, outside of that, I'd like to see some movement speed adjustments, but in a couple of different areas. I felt like there were a lot of downsides and I felt sluggish in a lot of areas. ADS move speeds absolutely were something that like previously whenever we had Modern Warfare 3, the classic, you had things like Stalker that allowed you to move faster strafing. I feel like even without that in the game, by comparison, we just feel really slow strafing corners this year as opposed to others. Additionally, the overall movement speed I definitely think could be a little bit better with some categories of weapons. SMGs feel pretty good. Rifles felt a little too cumbersome. I don't know if that's just me or not, but I'd love to see some of those speeds. ADS in times, sprint out times, those felt a bit too slow as well. I'd love to see those adjusted and maybe tweaked slightly. Maybe I'm asking for a little bit too much in terms of that speed where it just becomes crackhead energy, but I don't think we'd be able to know until we saw some sort of build with that in it. One thing that I'd also love to see the removal of, and I don't know why it's back again, it seems like nobody really liked it in Modern Warfare 2019, and then we got rid of it within the last two years, is that fly-in mechanic on spawn. Vanguard, if I'm not mistaken, actually did remove this from the beta. It was there initially, and then we didn't get it afterwards. I don't know why we have that. I can understand in Ground War, where it's a larger scale combat, you're kind of flying in from that top down level where you can select your spawn, but in 6v6 and maybe 10v10 and beyond, whatever we have in terms of not Ground War game modes, I, just like in Modern Warfare 2019, don't understand the need for that. I feel like that sacrifices one to two seconds of game time that could be crucial for your team. So I'd love to see that removed. And finally, in terms of removals, I would personally love to see field upgrade animations removed or changed slightly. Same thing with streaks, honestly. I feel like when you take out a streak, you call in a streak or you pop a field upgrade, Dead Silence is a great example of this. It pulls out like an actual straight up like iPad or like controller system. And that takes a couple of added seconds that you're vulnerable and hip fire. And it's just a little too long in that animation for me. Honestly, when I look back at it, I think the games like Infinite Warfare were perfect for things like streaks because all you did was tap your helmet and you were right back into the action. That was about a half second animation, if that, not a two to three second animation that in smaller maps could absolutely get you killed depending on where you're at and where the flow is coming from. So I'd love to see some of that adjusted, if not removed entirely. And then finally, the last thing that I want to say is optimization. I definitely think that this needs to be something that is prioritized here for the full launch. This, unfortunately, I can't give any sort of suggestions on how to do this. That is well beyond my scope of knowledge, but having seen so many crashing issues on Xbox, experienced them myself on a PC that is insanely overkill, and then seeing things like low frame rates on super high-end systems, it's just something that I'm really hoping this was just a beta build and was something that 
isn't fully optimized in that regard. And then come the full launch, we see better frame rate, less crashing, all that kind of stuff. I really hope that that's a thing that we get in the final build of the game. But beyond that, that's kind of my feedback on what I'd change, adjust, add, remove, you name it. Overall, I do think this game has some pretty good bones. I do think, and I know a lot of people were disagreeing on this, I think this is a nice successor to Modern Warfare 2019 if some things are adjusted. I think that the bones, again, are what really make this up. There's a lot of potential here that we could see. I just think that Infinity Ward was trying to reinvent the wheel a little too much. Whether that be to sort of avoid that criticism of, oh, it's Modern Warfare 2019 times two, or like Modern Warfare 2019 1.5 or something something like that. I don't know what the reasoning, but hopefully some of this stuff is adjusted. Hopefully the full launch of the game gives us a little bit more in terms of some fundamentals that may please everybody. While it's almost impossible, one can hope. But outside of that, I like the overall maps. I like the modes we saw on offer. I liked the gunplay. I think that a lot of the gun animations, sounds, feel of the guns felt really good. I'm excited to see Ground War coming back. Invasion, while AI weren't necessarily my cup of tea, I think it's a very cool mode to introduce as a middle ground between those that want to play 6v6 or 10v10 and those that want to play 32v32 Ground War. I think things on a fundamental level, like allowing you to have kill streaks or score streaks without sacrificing a perk or anything from your in-game experience, I think that's a great win for the overall systems of the game. And and other things like that. So don't take this as an absolute negative of a video. I just think that there are a lot of things that could be adjusted to make this game even better on top of already a decent fundamental build for what we have on offer. But again, my opinion, you guys are more than welcome to disagree if you do, but that's what we're going to call it. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What are you guys looking forward to? What do you guys hope to see adjusted, changed, added, removed? Whatever the case from Modern Warfare 2 here upcoming. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback, so drop them down there. But if you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. Video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 2. We got a lot upcoming with Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ in the next couple of months. So stick it here if you guys would like to stay on top of all of that. For now, thanks so much for watching. Modern Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.